This is Carl at National RV Detroit. I'm going to show you through your Mount McKinley Model 827 toy hauler. Okay, I'm on the door side of the trailer and I'm moving towards the rear. Okay, so let's see what we've got here. You've got scissor type stabilizer jacks that take a three quarter inch crank or a three quarter inch socket. All right. I believe, let me look under here so I can give you the correct information. As if, yeah, so your tire store is underneath your spare tire, and that's where you would use the crank to uh, crank it down so you can get a hold of it. Yep, sure enough. Okay. You've got outside speakers, you've got a power awning with a LED strip. This is your service panel for your refrigerator. You don't really have to go in there, but keep in mind you want this hose to hang out just like it is. That's for condensation that's generated by the refrigerator. So you want it to drain to the outside like it is. Um, your hitch, uh, we will show you how it works uh, when you get here to pick it up. So we're gonna we're gonna walk you through that. It's a uh, Reese Pro Series hitch, so it's a it's a more than adequate for this trailer. It's a good hitch. You got a scare light here, which is just a holdover t term. It's just a just a white light. They used to use them to s allegedly scare animals away. They basically they had a seal beam, an automotive seal beam on each side of the trailer. Um, but the problem is the light generally attracts animals. It doesn't scare them away. So that it never quite, <laughs> never quite worked out the way they wanted it to. All right, you got a deep cycle marine battery, two LP tanks, a power tongue jack. Now, if this tongue jack fails, you can crank it with a ratchet right there. Okay, so you can actually get yourself out of trouble. Uh, let me look to see if there's one in the trailer. Sometimes you get one, sometimes you don't. Let me look here. Hold on. Sorry about my camera work. I'm all over the place. Yeah, it's over back over where I was just at. So you have um, obviously your stabilizer crank, but you also have a smaller one right here, right there, and that's to crank your... Uh, power tongue jack in case it was to fail. Alrighty. So, you have an outside shower. This is your city water connection. This is where you get water to the trailer. It's the most common way to get water. You're just going to screw the uh, hose at the uh, campsite right onto there and turn it on and everything is pressurized. This is a sprayer here. It plugs in there. We're still prepping the trailer so we're working on cleaning that up. This is just satellite or most likely campground cable through to the entertainment area of the trailer. You can send whatever you want through there, any signal you want is what I'm saying, but most people probably use campground cable. Your shower is just an outside shower for kids and dogs and what have you. Um, let me look at the tanks here. Let's see what we got here. Okay, so now there might be water in the gray tank. We're still testing it, so we got to be careful. Nope, it's already open, so okay. So, uh, what you'll do, obviously the gray, or the black valve is for the black tank. Uh, the black tank holds toilet water and waste. The gray is for the gray tank, and it's for sink and shower water. So when you put your hose on here, you put the other end of the dump station, you're going to pull the black valve and dump it. Then, after that, you're going to pull the gray valve and dump it. You do it in that order because the gray water is actually cleaner than the black water, so it'll just clean it up a bit. Uh, it, it's better than <laughs> rinsing with the black water, obviously. Okay. All right, so we also have another way to get water to the trailer, and that's the fresh water tank. So basically, if you don't have plumbing on your campsite, you can pre-fill this tank. Your onboard fresh water tank, you can pre-fill it, and it will, uh, there's an electric pump inside, and you can just pressurize the system that way and use uh, onboard water so everything will work just like you've got plumbing on the campsite even though you don't. Your water heater works on gas. I just want to show you that this right here is where you drain it. It's an inch and a sixteenth socket. Okay. Always make sure there's water in the water heater before you turn it on. Uh, this is just a, a solar kit here. Um, so that, that's all it is. There's pre-wired, it's pre-wired, somewhat pre-wired for solar, and that's where you would plug a panel in right there. 
Okay, generally used to charge your battery, that sort of thing. Okay. Okay, so your doors come down just, just, just uh, like you would expect. I'm not going to drop them right now. We'll do that when you get here, just because uh, it's all self-evident. Um, now, remember, you have to inspect the roof of your trailer. Every every trailer owner has to inspect his roof or her roof. Um, at least three times a season so figure the spring and in the fall you'll go up there and then once in the middle of the summer check all the sealing down the roof make sure there's no cracking or separation starting if you do see that some year sometime make sure you get it taken care of odds are you won't have to do anything for quite a while but that's why you inspect it just to make sure you're just protecting your investment and you want to keep it nice and dry so okay so here's your control panel uh, here, let me get the monitor panel around here. I see if I can get a better angle so we can actually see here. Let me see. Okay, so um, your gosh, I'm getting a bad glare. Here, let me pull the door shut. Maybe that'll work for us. Okay, that's better. So um, your battery is charged. Always check it when you're not plugged in. We're not plugged in right now. Um, fresh water tank has a third full. That's because we're still water testing it, so we'll drain it for you. As they fill, as the tanks fill, they graduate at one-third increments. The, the lights will light up as it fills. Black tank. Um, gray tank, which I think this, this is a standard panel. I think this one just has one gray tank. It does not have a galley tank because I'm looking at the plumbing is, is right all bunched in one area, so I'm sure they only use one tank on this one. All right. To turn on your water pump, it's right here, right? Your water heater is right here. Like I said, always make sure there's water in the tank before you turn it on. And your awning switch to extend and retract your awning is right here. Make sure you don't leave the awning out unattended. Um, if you're not going to be at the campsite, roll it in because you don't want it to get damaged by the wind and weather. That can change instantly and and you'll, you'll uh, be calling your insurance company before you know it. So you always want to roll it in when you're not there. This is just your radio here, obviously. It plays discs. Um, it has, uh, let's see what, what, what we have here. You have Bluetooth on this one so you can play wirelessly. Um, it has a uh, HDMI which must be in the back because um, so you can hook it up to a TV set. It has a USB to stream off of right here. Um, so it has a lot of uh, features. Um, everything you need for camping, that's for sure. All right. Your refrigerator is a gas absorption refrigerator, which means that it'll run on 110 AC, but it'll also run on LP gas. Um, so you turn it on like so. Then you'll go to auto. Auto means electric. The reason they call it auto is because it automatically seeks out electricity. And if it can't find it, it will um, automatically start on gas so therefore uh, it, electricity takes parameters so if it can find it it uses it so therefore if you're if you're you know you're plugged in obviously and you're running on electricity and you go off for an adventure during one day and you're gone all day and the power at the campground goes out midway through the day it'll automatically switch over to gas for you so you don't spoil the food you can run it dedicated to gas by doing that when you're pulling it down the road, but either way, if there's no power, it will find the it will turn it on on gas. All right. And another thing to know about this is this this thing on the end of this this wire here is called a thermistor. What you're looking at is actually just a clip that holds it in place. You can pull it out of the clip. You can do whatever you want. Uh, remember, this is just a clip for it. The thermistor is inside the clip. So you want to push it up as high as it goes. You see the sticker there says the higher you go, the cooler it gets. So as far as you can stretch that wire is how how high you want it. Um, sometimes you'll have to back it down if it's cold outside, but generally speaking, you're going to have it up all the way. All right. So your bed lift control is right here. All right. Your bed lift, obviously this goes up and down, so you can use it as a bunk. So um, in order to bring it down, you're going to drop your, your beds slash couches. you got one on each side. Um, you drop them horizontal, and then you can bring this down so people can so people can sleep on it um, but then you, you take it up uh, during the day and get it out of the way so you don't have to 
you know, deal with it. Obviously, when you're when you're carrying a four wheeler or dirt bikes or whatever you got in the back here, you got to have it up anyway, obviously, to get the garage space you need. So um, it's made by Lippert, and it's uh, it's pretty much an industry standard. So it's a good one. Um, like I said, these obviously your beds fold down to two beds or to two couches or up completely out of the way. You also have a table here that can go in, in between them. Okay. This device down here is your power converter. What this thing does is converts 110 AC to 12 volt DC. So uh, let's look at that. So on this side you've got regular 110 AC household type circuit breakers just like you'd have in your house um, and they're labeled right so obviously you know what to do if any of those trip you just reset them like that um, now the power is then converted over to 12 volt DC you can see you've got automotive type fuses here they're 12 volts um, and they're labeled so uh, if uh, at, this runs the 12 volt side of your trailer obviously so if any of these fuses were to blow they'll actually light up and you can see them glowing through this this tinted plastic here right there um, also this is a battery tender so when you're plugged into shore power it'll always send so much energy your battery needs up front and send it what it needs if it's charged it'll just trickle a couple amps if it's low it'll send 10 amps or whatever it needs all right but you have to be plugged in for that obviously okay and also around here is going to be a oh there it is your uh, LP carbon monoxide detector right here should always be green like that that will warn you if there's a gas build up in, in the trailer if it happens it goes off you send everybody outside shut the gas off at the front and figure out what's going on all right so your microwave works like any other microwave there's nothing unique about it you got an exhaust fan that works like any other exhaust fan now this let's see here this is a little different i'm going to have a hard time doing it with one hand but this has say this is a newer style uh and uh, it has safety built into it so that's the sparker there I don't even know if he's got the gas turned on at this point but to light this one you have to depress whoops I'm sorry you have to depress this oh it actually lit so it does have the gas on so you have to depress you put it to light depress it like that and then push the sparker to get it to light that way kids can't just grab a hold of it little kids I mean and turn it on by accident which is always a problem with RVs kids uh, mess with the knobs and all that sort of thing I'm sure you know that okay the faucet side obviously works like any other faucet you just got a more modern design and then you should always you can put the, the, the faucet neck down and then of course to travel you do that always have it down when you're traveling okay I think that covers everything back here let me look around you also have a smoke detector, obviously. Um, your garage door. You can see the ramp at the top folds out. When you get it down, you can fold it. You can fold it um, over, and it actually makes a transition piece, a threshold piece between the, the ground and the ramp itself. All right. So, when it comes to your bathroom, um, first of all, this this trailer has a GFCI plug. All the plugs in the trailer are wired through this. So no matter what plug you're using, if you're using the one outside and it pops, you're going to reset it in here. The sink and shower work like any other sink and shower. You just have to, have to remember to use the fan in your vent when you're using the shower so you don't build up too much humidity in the trailer and cause issues. Um, so the toilet, the, let me turn the water pump on because I noticed we still had water in the tank. So we can do that, I think. Um, so... You, the bottom line is we're starting off with an empty black tank so um, you get to the campground you hook up the power and the water then you're gonna come in here and this tr this toilet has to have chemical in it and a little bit of water to start using it anytime you're starting with a with an empty black tank so you'll take your chemical whichever brand you use you'll dump one dose right in the toilet there then you'll do this water comes swirling out like it does it's going right into the black tank, which is directly below, and you'll stand on it just for a couple minutes till you put about a gallon or so of water in there. One gallon, two gallons, whatever. It's not really important. The important thing is you put some water in there and chemical before you start using it. Now, if you're going to stay on the campsite, let's say for another week, 
and you had to dump your black tank so it's empty again, you'd have to come back in here and repeat the procedure if you're going to stay there. Put chemical and about a gallon or two of water in there. And uh, it's good till next time you dump it. Okay? Um, this trailer has to be winterized, of course. The water heater will have bypass valves on the back of it. And you're going to have to put it in bypass mode before you pump any antifreeze into the system. You're doing that so you don't... Um, get antifreeze into the water heater tank because if you do it's going to leave a really foul taste and a bad smell that won't go away so uh, keep that in mind you always have to bypass it before you uh, pump, any, uh, pump any antifreeze into the system so okay also this you can see this is your your analog thermostat you're just going to turn this to the one click to the left to turn it on and then you set the temperature down here it's very basic okay and your air conditioner obviously has controls on the AC like that okay all right so I want to thank you for purchasing your trailer at National RV Detroit um, if you have any issues or questions or problems you let us know we'll we'll help you out and take care of you um, keep in mind that uh, like I said you have to bypass the water heater when you winterize and remember what I said about inspecting your roof seals you always want to do that three times a season every trailer owner should do it not all, all of them do it but it's important to do uh, odds are you don't have to do anything, like I said, when you're up there, but you're just inspecting to make sure. Okay? All right, thank you very much.